So I'll, before I start on the question, I will first uh, acknowledge that there are formulas in your textbook that you can basically look up <laughs> and do this quickly. Um, now, I, I will go through the derivation of those formulas. So, um, but you know, if you're in a hurry and you just want to quickly answer that, then your textbook actually has the formulas. Uh, they have, okay, here's the final equation for angular magnification. And um, they tell you, um, ah, so I think they give you this. Uh, this is for the strain. This is for the strained eye, and this is for the relaxed eye. So, um, so <laughs> you can do that. Uh, let me um, kind of sketch out the pictures because in your textbook, uh, they do have this sketch of a picture, but they don't have the two versions of, yeah, two versions. So they have this picture, although I think this picture might be useful. Uh, no, no. So your textbook has that. Your textbook has the formulas that you can use. Now let me work on driving those formulas. So when you're looking at angular magnification, um, it's different from the other type of linear magnification that most of the problems that deals with. So most of the problems that deals with the linear magnification defined as the ratio of the um, the image size to the object size, with the angular magnification, you are dealing with an entirely different quantity. You are imagining uh, you Im you are imagining looking at an object like this, and these have an apparent size. And even though it, this remains the same size, depending on it whether it's close or far away, its apparent size um, changes. And so whenever they are telling you, um, asking you about angular magnification, uh, capital N that your textbook uses, um, they are looking at what is the apparent size of the image, uh, angular size um, of the image. How much of the um, space does it occupy in your field of view? Uh, referenced to some reference size and um, and this reference size is something that takes a little bit of thinking through. And this reference size is something that also, depending on the context, it changes meaning. Here, it's important that the context is the magnifying glass. So the context is where you can move your object. So the place where this uh, um, object should be is, um, so I think I can maybe even demonstrate because if I move this too close, then it won't, my camera can quite focus. So the camera that I'm working with, it has a near point. It has the closest distance where it can focus. And your eye in the same way, when you're trying to look at something, there's the closest distance where you can still focus. And that is what we are going to use to set a reference size here. And that's what your textbook is kind of sketching in this picture here. That's the purpose of uh, this uh, picture here. It's saying you place the object at the closest possible distance where you can focus and based on the size of the object. And th this is the reference size we'll be using. So uh, let me just sketch that out. So this is for reference only. Um, so you are imagining this picture of placing the, um, this is how I draw my eyes, placing the object, the closest distance where you can focus. And this is where, this is why they have to give you the near point of your eye, because this is the kind of the distance where you are going to assume that you place your uh, place your uh, your object. Uh, if you place it any closer, then you can't focus on that. So, um, so in calculating this reference angular size, we are going to use this as a given. And I will say, I think my near point of the my eye might be about twenty five centimeters, or maybe not. But a lot of the people, you know, younger people usually have near point that's a lot closer. So this is just a convention that we are using. So with the 
A and B, they are asking this question, you know, if you hold it in such a way that you can view the image with relaxed eyes. Um, so relaxed eyes means where the object is at an infinity away. So the scenario you are considering is where you have the lens. And in all these situations, we'll consider the situation where the lens is right in front of your eye. Um, and uh, and if, and that's actually an important thing in the lab next week as you are um, working through the angular magnification stuff that when you are using magnifying glass, just put it right in front of your eye. And what you change, uh, it, it's kind of a bit of an unusual way to use magnifying glass. I think most of us are used to looking at things on the table and just moving magnifying glass but um, kind of the standardized way we'll be doing is put the magnifying glass right in front of your eye and then kind of bend it down into um, where the object is. So in this relaxed configuration, you are, so let me just uh, draw a representation of the focal point and where you are going to place the object is such that your, um, your, your image will be infinity away. So you're going to place your object wherever it needs to be, um, either further this way or further this way, so that when the image forms, image is uh, going to be a virtual image and it'll be infinity away, it's very big. So we are not looking for a linear magnification. That's one of the reasons we are looking for angular magnification. And so as you consider this, you know, as you are thinking through this uh, thin lens equation that we've been working with, um, so you want the image distance to be basically negative infinity. That's the virtual image very far away. So this is going to go to zero. That makes uh, um, this question quite easy because then we can figure out the object distance. Oh, so we are going to get object distance is the focal length. Um, in fact, I think uh, I kind of drew it on the wrong side. Um, my object needs to be on this side to produce the virtual image. And basically, as I place it as close to the focal point as possible without going over it, I'll have a, a virtual image that's at infinity away. So uh, that's what I'm going to draw as a representation of. I have an object here right at the focal length. And so with the focal length of six centimeters, if I had an object just at six centimeters, normally I wouldn't be able to focus on it. But with that magnifying glass in front of me, I am able to focus on the image that's at an infinity away. So now uh, this is really nice because the ray diagram or one of the rays actually tell you the angular size of this right away. Um, it's not this ray because this ray is complicated, but in fact, I think I drew this one wrong. Um, it bends to Stably, my yeah, it should be bending something like this. This is a second principal ray. This actually tells me the angular size of the image right away because wherever my image is, super far away, this is still going to be, uh, you know, this is going to be the uh, one of the lines that goes to the tip of the arrow of the image. So, so this is my the image angular size. So uh, I think I have enough information to write down the angular magnification in this scenario. So my reference angular size is going to be the object size divided by this near point. And my image angular size is going to be, um, well, still the same height, object height, because uh, this is the kind of the similar, the one of the triangles I'm looking at object size divided by um, divided by the, the focal length. Oh, and I'm using the whole small angle approximation so that, and the angle is in radians. Um, in radians, the and the, the height divided by distance gives you the ang angular size, ang the radian, angle in radians. So, so yeah, with that, I simplified uh, L over focal length. That gives me the angular magnification for this relaxed eye. That's the easy case. Um, so uh, I'll plug in this number later, six over 20, or sorry, 25 over six. So something close to four. With the 
Brain the eyes. Um, this is one that takes a little bit more math, and uh, I guess I'll just use the formula that's in the textbook. I'll just describe the situation where this is derived. So with the strained eyes, you are not um, placing the image at infinity distance away. You are trying to place the image as close as you can focus on. So with the strained eye configuration, what you are trying to do is you are trying to, okay, so I'm going to place my object somewhere inside of the focal length so that the virtual image forms at some finite distance away. And the finite distance away where I want the virtual image to form, that will be my near point of the eye. So under that configuration, kind of work this out and, you know, work out the distance that's uh, somewhere there. Uh, and kind of just quickly sketching it out. Then you, you have all the kind of things set up that you need for that. Um, so what I would do one is this object distance because once I know the object distance, then I can get my uh, image, or I guess I can also get my image, whatever the case. Um, so, um, but my object dis distance is the main unknown. In this equation, I want my image distance to be minus L so that it's a virtual image at L away. And I want my focal length to be um, a focal length that's already given. Um, so, um, so here, you know, I have to solve for the object distance. And uh, why am I yeah. <laughs> solve for the object distance? Uh, so it's going to be, I think, uh, sorry, I can't do this in my head. So it's a reciprocal of one over F minus uh, one over DI. And let me just do this numerically so that, um, I mean, I could use this formula, but um, uh, let me just do it numerically to show that this is basically the picture you need. And in terms of working it out, um, you know, the textbook does the detailed algebra. So my focal length is one over six centimeters, or focal length is six centimeters, so one over F, one over six, minus, I have to be careful here, one divided by minus 25 centimeters because I'm looking for a virtual image. And so this will be basically plus one over 25 equals, and then I need to take the reciprocal of that, raised to the power of minus one. So that gives me the object distance at 4.8, uh, well, 4.839 centimeter away. You can see that it's closer than what it was here. That's one of the reasons this will be bigger. Also textbook formula plus one. So, um, so with this object distance, I think uh, I can, um, so the version of this expression will be, the magnification is the, the, so this is what I'm looking at. This is my image angular size. So it's going to be the object height divided by the, um, the object distance divided by, oh, I, this is why I want you to use object height so that in the reference angular size, it'll cancel out. If I use image size, then I don't get this cancellation. So, um, so I need to divide the, so it's L over the O, so I need to divide L, uh, let me store this, 25 divided by the object distance in this scenario. So that's uh, 5.17, um, so that should be the answer. 5.17, and uh, since the textbook formula says that this is one more than that, this should be one, 4.17. Um, and, um, yeah, so, so, you know, textbook does drive this scenario and, um, and shows you the, uh, formulas that you can plug numbers into, but since this is a situation that you will see in the lab next week, I want you to kind of give a more, um, descriptive description.